okay. Welcome to Ask 2 Plus, and today's question comes from an anonymous viewer sending in a question, and they just ask where to get started with list building. That is a fantastic question, and one that I get asked quite a bit. Now, I let me be very clear here, I don't do a lot of tournaments. I actually have only been to one event for AOS, and didn't go so great. Uh, but I did do a lot of events when it came to War Machine Hordes and X-Wing. I really enjoyed those games and the kind of uh, competitive scene that they had when I was playing them both in Iowa and a little bit up here in the Seattle area. And so uh, my approach to list building is kind of based on some of the concepts that I learned. War Machine Hordes is much more of a direct correlation, so we're going to kind of borrow some ideas from that. Now this viewer left absolutely no information about what army they play or anything like that, so we're going to do kind of a very 40,000 foot view. I'm sure they were looking for resources, uh, and I'll, I'll give some of those here in a little bit. Uh, but here's the thing, when I started with list building, especially with War Machine Hordes, th there's two kinds of lists you can pursue. Question lists and answer lists. We're going to dive into what those mean. The most common type of list that you're going to encounter when you're first getting into the game is the answer list. This means, uh, do I have something in my army that can handle any situation? Meaning, if I know my arm, uh, opponent is going to bring a few tanks and a few infantry dudes and maybe a wizard or a psyker, depending on 40k or US, um, do I have stuff that can deal with that? Do I have anti-armor weaponry? Do I have a lot of stuff to deal with little guys? Do I have, you know, stuff to kind of shoot down magic? Do I have responses to my opponent's threats? And so the reason I call it an answer list is because you have an answer to everything. This is also, you could describe it as being an all-rounder list, something that has a little bit of everything to keep the game flavorful, a variety of units, things like that. Now the thing about answer lists, and they are great and they are fun and tend to be very thematic, is that they also can't do everything right you can get so good at everything that you're kind of great at nothing is kind of the conundrum they can be in so a lot of answer lists are going to focus on addressing your enemy's threats and playing for the scenario how can i achieve victory while shutting down what my opponent's trying to do whatever it is whether it's infantry hordes um big monsters or something like that or magic how can I shut those down and win the game? And that, generally speaking, is going to be through scenario presence. So you're going to have a wide variety of units that can do all kinds of things. Some fast-moving troops that can get to objectives and claim them. And also some heavier, durable units to sit on those objectives and not be dislodged. That's kind of the core of what an answer list is. Address the opponent's uh, things they'll throw at you. And then also be able to win the game, usually through objectives. I say you generally win through objective playing because your list is not tailored to present a particular threat. It's presented to address all of your opponent's threats. That's the idea. And this moves us into the other kind of list, which is a question list, which is something that people kind of misunderstand when I've said it before. Basically, if you build a list and you see your army has certain themes in it, for example, orcs is, you can get a lot of guys on the table for very cheap, and they're all good at melee. Um, same, same thing for iron jaws as it is for orcs in 40k. The question I, is, I'm building this list and I'm asking my opponent a question, can you handle that many orcs? Can you handle that many wounds? Can you stop a wall of green flesh easily and do it efficiently so that when that wall does it eventually hit you, it's crippled enough to not kill you. I'm just gonna rapid fire off a few ideas for question lists. By that I mean, obviously, like I just said, number of troops, but sometimes the question can be specific. Can you handle a number of tough troops? Like if you spammed Blight Kings in AOS or Plague Marines in 40K, those are both very tough troops, respectively. They're kind of the counterparts for each other in each system. Can you handle a fewer, but really, really tough units? Not everyone can. Can you handle ranged attacks? Can you handle um, a barrage of magic powers? Like Legions of Nagash can just barf spells for days in AOS, and the Zinch armies can go ballistic with magic in 40k. So what you're doing is you're tailoring your list to pose a specific challenge to your opponent. Can you deal with X? And then obviously that can be as specific or as broad as you want it to be. A common misunderstanding when I say this, as I said earlier, is that people think I'm encouraging spam. By this I mean um, don't just take two units of orcs, take, you know, six units of max orcs and just flood the table with two to three hundred models and just go ballistic. Um, yes, that is a question list. You're asking if your opponent can handle that many boys, of which most lists cannot, to be frank with you. Um, but the thing is, I'm not encouraging spam per se. What I'm saying is, 
um, there's a lot of ways to ask the same question. For example, if you built a Skaven army, you could ask the question, can you handle this many guys? But if you fill that army with clan rats, plague monks, and a few other odds and ends that they have, and then have back that up with, um, say, something like warp lightning cannons, I'm sorry, I kind of have a brain fart there for a second, um, you're asking, can your opponent deal with this many wounds total, but can you also handle the variety of damage that those wounds are going to put out? Clan rats are very straightforward, but plague monks have a lot of tricks up their sleeve to be able to do a lot of inordinate amounts of damage than you'd think they'd be able to. Those are two very different units, but they pose the same question to your opponent. And if they choose, if they choose to focus fire on either one of them, the other will wreck face if they let them. Keep in mind, they have to answer that question, how many wounds can you possibly take out, while also trying to find solutions to deal with um, warp lighting cannons that are devastating them from the back line. Again, that's not spamming a unit that's asking the same question across multiple units. If you're a Tyranid player, there's a great way to mix up your army by having Hormigons, Termigons, and a bunch of little stuff, and then um, rushing those forward. And you can have multiple small units, you can have a few really big ones. You're asking the same question across a variety of designs in your army. Some of the best, I'll take Age of Sigmar for example, some of the best question lists out there are Legions of Nagash, specifically when it comes to uh, bringing back large hordes of models. Because what, I'm, what you're really asking is, can you take out 30 skeletons, but specifically, can you take out 30 skeletons in a scenario game? Because if I put that unit of 30 skeletons on an objective, can you dislodge them and then withstand the power of that unit coming back into that fight. Now, of course, they're not going to be the objective at that point, but they can come back into that fight. And so that is a huge boon to that army. It's a hard question to answer. That's why Legion of Nagash is doing pretty darn well. Same thing for Daughters of Cain. Can you handle this many attacks coming at you? Yes, they're a horde army. They're a surprisingly resilient horde army, as I believe, but the truth of the matter is their power lies in how many attacks each individual girl can do. And so at the receiving end, it's like, um, yes, I can I can easily take out 60 models in a game, right? With certain builds, you totally can, no problem. The thing is, is that if a fraction of those models get to you, can you withstand the number of attacks that those daughters are going to throw at you? A lot of things can't. They kind of crumble when um, the wall of girls hits them. Especially the kind of units that are able to take out girls at range. Meaning the units that answer the question, can you handle that many wounds, is not the kind of answer you'd want for, can you handle that many attacks. The things that project threat that far, like the big guns, big shooting things, tend to not be able to withstand a whole lot of physical punishment once the girls get there. So it's a bet heavy to win heavy thing. Now here's the deal. Um, question lists, like I said, they don't have to be spam, they can be very flavorful. A lot of question list can be very flavorful when you talk about uh, you know Skaven using lots of clan rats there's nothing more thematic than Skaven using a lot of clan rats so that don't kind of get that out of your head I'm not talking about spam I'm talking about posing a specific threat to your opponent now the problem with question lists is they tend to be very one-dimensional not that they can't be played in a variety of different ways that they, you can always play for scenario you can play to ask specific questions to your opponent like I just said but the thing is is if you have a list, let's take my Skaven example, right? You just stuff it to the guild with clan rats and plague monks and all kinds of stuff. If you walk up to a table, you set your army down, and you ask your opponent, can you handle this many wounds? And they don't flinch and say, totally. You've lost the game. <laughs> um, because if they can answer your specific question, uh, you're going to be in for a really rough road. At that point, I'd say, like, oh, play for a scenario. Do whatever it takes to win. You know what I mean? Like, win at all costs. But I mean, like, sacrifice your army to get scenario presence and try to win that way. Don't try to hammer down the question, can you handle this? Can you handle this? Because the answer is yes. So the thing is, is um, answer lists tend to be very all-rounder. And question lists are very focused, very precise about addressing one specific mechanic or issue or theme or something like that. When you put these two lists together, what tends to happen is that the question list generally will win. And the reason I say that is um, if you have a lot of wounds, right? Like we'll go with the Skaven guy as our question list and the answer guy is say Stormcast. I have some shooting, uh, some attacks, but they're generally meant for scenario play and you put them together. Can the attacks that that army puts out mitigate the advantage of the wounds that the Skaven player has? Not necessarily, although not completely. It's kind of a toss-up at that point. 
the thing is, is that the strength of these two armies is different. Specific versus general. The general guy at a tournament is going to have a much better time because you're going to face a variety of opponents asking different questions. And you'll be able to address some of those and try to mitigate your weaknesses in others. The question list guy is going to be really, really good and dominate the tournament until he comes up to the guy who can answer that question. Now, how does any of this matter and answer your question when you're talking about getting started with list building? Well, here is the key. What you're going to do is go home, go to your battle tome. You can look at some resources we'll talk about here online. And you're going to look and see what your army does. And by this, I mean very broad 40,000 foot view looking at your army. For example, Fire Slayers are extremely resilient. They have a four up save after the save when they're in big units or certain other conditions for other units. Um, and they're very resilient and each one of them has a ranged and melee weapon. So they're very like, high damage output, very expensive point wise, but very resilient. And so that's kind of their, their theme, their strength. You can choose to go with an answer list and try to address everything. You don't have a lot of long range shooting in that army, but you could try to make a list that addresses most of your enemy questions they can throw at you. The only real weakness in Fire Slayers is magic. Um, or you can ask your opponent a specific question, which is, I'm going to take 90 Volkite Berserkers. Can you handle a 5-up, 4-up after the save dude in your face all game? That's a hard question to answer. Um, but if they can, you're toast. And so that's kind of the, the balance here. We go into some other armies. Um, that was a good AOS example. Let's talk about, say, Stormcast or the, or the ultimate answer list army where they do have something for every single phase. They have characters and units that are great in every single phase. Like, uh, I mean, it's a specific phase. They have cool wizards that are pretty cheap. They have artillery, great for shooting. They have some melee units that are great for tying people up. Some that are great for decimating the opponents. All that kind of stuff. They have people who are suited to do one job very well. So if you take all those guys, put them in an army, have it pretty well balanced, you have a perfect answer list. Everyone can do a little bit of something, and generally your army can address most of any threat. So Stormcast definitely weigh in in that heavy role. They don't do so well when you start asking specific questions. There are very few builds they can do that are very specific. Uh, one that we're seeing quite a bit of is shooting. Uh, they can make a pretty deadly shooting list, which is of course the Stormcast question list variant. Can you handle this much shooting? If the answer is no, just go home. <laughs> um, and that's actually the kind of list that Jack from Rerolling Ones takes to events where he has a ton of shooting from Stormcast. And they have a pretty tough basic chassis, two wounds, like four up save or something like that. So they're a pretty resilient shooting army. And that's a really hard question to address. Um, as far as 40k stuff goes, orcs are a great example. Currently, before their codex of can you handle this many wounds on this many guys, um, it's a great question list. But also loading your army up to the gills with uh, high damage weapons is totally possible. Every boy already does a number of attacks. So they can address hordes pretty darn well. And so they can pretty much address any threat depending on how you build the army. Uh, moving into kind of backing up even further, what I would say is resources, is if you're trying to learn what your army does. For every army in AOS and every army in 40k, if you just type in the name of the army and the word tactics, you're pretty much always universally going to be brought to a page uh, called 1d4chan, which is sort of like a community board, almost like a wiki, where people go through and write out what each unit does, what army building is like, how to play them, kind of give you an overall tactical sense. I really do recommend that, uh, simply because it gives you a good, perfectly free way of understanding what kind of the theme of your force is. Now, keep in mind, not every army can do every single thing. Uh, for example, Clan Pestilence, if you're playing that as an army, first of all, good on you. You're awesome. Uh, secondly, they cannot play an elite model army very well. Uh, they're always going to have hordes on the table. That's their thing. So many of their units are based in the mechanics of having dudes around them. So they are built to ask a specific question and they don't have a lot of flexibility in what they do. On the other end of the spectrum is Stormcast. You have access to everything under the sun. So, you know, you got to think about what your army is good at and really play to those strengths. If you are playing Pestilence and you are looking for list building ideas, lean into whatever that faction really focuses on. Just like Fire Slayers focus on tough blobs of units, so too do Skaven stuff focus on large hordes. And then from other factions you have a lot more 
versatility, I would say. So to directly answer your question, as I do kind of surmise my thoughts at the end here, uh, first thing where do you get literally started with list building? Go to 24 chan look up your army, get a sense of what they're good at, and then what their strengths are, things like that, notable units, and then really think about what kind of list you want to build. Do you want to lean into a specific theme if your army dictates that you do, or this, if you have the versatility to do something you like, or do you want to have a more general generalists list <laughs> where you can address most threats that your opponents throw at you. Uh, I would recommend the latter if you have a large gaming group where you have like a lot of different things that can pop up. This way you can feel like you have a game no matter what. Uh, but I do recommend the former, the first one making a question list if there are specific things that either you like about the game, you want to focus on magic or lots of dudes or something like that. Um, really lean into that theme. Either way, I do suggest you try to build a very thematic army. I think it works for both, and you can have a lot of fun either way. And if you would like to ask a question too while you're reforging or give us a topic idea, head over to the link in the description down below. It'll bring you to a small form, and you just have to leave your question. There's no information required. Your name is optional. But ask your question, and we'll get it in the show at some point. Hey, Wargamers, Doug here. If you like the show, help the channel grow. Consider becoming one of my patrons over on Patreon. My patrons are vital to help decide the direction of the channel, and patrons of a certain level are automatically entered to win whatever battle tome I just finished reviewing. And I'll ship it anywhere worldwide. But more than that, it's an invitation to be part of a great group that wants to serve the wargaming community as a whole. Click the link in the description down below and you'll be brought over to my Patreon page, which is bursting with helpful information and will answer a lot of questions you may have. For as little as a dollar a month, you can support me and make this channel possible. Thank you all so much for your consideration, and happy wargaming. Hey wargamers, thank you so much for watching that video. Be sure to hit subscribe and click the little bell notification icon so you're alerted to all new videos coming out.